hope everyone is doing well. So you see in the title, it says, your customer service is a part of your brand. Your customer service is a part of your brand. Uh, one of the things that I believe wholeheartedly is that most people who go into business, about 95% of people who go into business, have every intention of doing good business. Um, I just don't believe that the majority of, the, of people go into business not wanting to provide an exceptional service for the people who are coming to them for, uh, for services. But even with those intentions, that is not always what the customer receives. Now, nobody is perfect, right? And so I don't even think people have an expectation for this flawless experience when they go to businesses. Although, if your focus is um, excellence, and I didn't say perfect, but a spirit of excellence, most people will get a really great experience when doing business with you or another business. But what I find that happens is, especially with social media, and you guys have to understand that I was in business before there was Facebook Lives and Instagram and all of those things. So a lot of the things that new business owners or even business owners who are bringing their business online are being exposed to and experiencing now is a lot of information and there are some amazing coaches uh, online who do exceptional jobs but one of the things that you have to understand is that each and every coach that you see well not each and every I just had to check myself, but many of them are talking from their own perspective, their own process. If they are teaching you a concept or a strategy or a system, more than likely it is what they've been taught or what has worked really well for them, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be exceptional for your business. Now, there are some foundational things that really just strengthen a business and a business's brand. When I owned a brick and mortar service-based business, one of the things, I remember when my mom got married and we hosted her bridal party at the salon. And um, I had a full service salon, day spa. We sold um, retail, so I had a boutique as well. And then we had a lot of skincare and wellness products, supplements, um, shea butters, all the things. And so this is before shea butter was even a, a big deal. But one of the things I remember one of the bribes made saying was how professional we were. And now mind you, this was somewhat family who was coming to the establishment. Um, but this was something that I heard quite often. And it wasn't because I'm just so super amazing, although I'm amazing, right? I'm, a, I'm an excellent coach. But the main reason why we heard that so often was because of systems. Because you really don't manage systems, you manage, you really don't manage people, you manage systems. And if you have systems in place that you can tweak, that you can take a look at, it will help you run your business like a well-oiled machine. And one of the grave mistakes I see people make is to think that their skill set is going to compensate for everything. So there are a lot of people who are really skilled in the thing that they do, but when it comes to some of the dynamics of business, they haven't tapped into that. And customer service is a huge part. So many people think that their logos and their website and their pretty pictures is their brand but it's not those are aesthetics those are things that impact the customer journey but they are not your brand however your customer service is your brand and i see a lot of businesses really going to the next level maybe expanding or enlarging the space in which they operate or um, 
getting more certifications and offering more services, uh, increasing their service menu, but because their hands are in so many different pots, the customer service aspect kind of goes down the drain. So a lot of things slip through the cracks that the service provider may not be paying as much attention to because they're really focused on doing an excellent job at the skill at which the person is coming to them for, but they drop the ball in the area of customer service, maybe um, in scheduling or not getting things to people you know, in a timely manner or um, the touch points that the clients and customers receive. And those things are huge. It's one of the reasons, y'all hear me on this right here. It's one of the reasons why people are pricing their services the way that they are. Y'all got to hear me, okay? Because if you know that you're dropping the ball often in other places throughout the service, you're going to feel compelled to discount people. You're not going to feel like your services are as valuable as they really are when it can be fixed and tweaked with a few systems in place. So I share with you all before, it's not that I was so amazing. I'm just, systems is my thing. It's one of my superpowers. And because of that, things flowed a lot easier in business for us. So we could dedicate time to, you know, the serve, proper time to the service. We could charge our value and not feel like we owe them anything. A lot of people, because they drop the ball in so many places, because they're overwhelmed, they don't have appropriate help. Um, a team, uh, they don't have proper systems in place, they may have dropped the ball somewhere. Because of this, um, they don't feel comfortable charging top value for the premium service that they actually offer. And we have a tendency to work backwards, so sometimes it's like if I could just get the clients in, but the experience that they're having is also a part of your brand. It's also a part of your brand. So before you decide to take this thing global, before you decide to open five different locations, before you decide to add on more services and all of those things, how are your systems? Because your systems is a part of customer service and customer service is a part of your brand. It, it's a part of your brand. The number of stories I've heard of unsatisfied customers who were going to a service provider who was excellent in the skill set that they did but because of all of those other touch points that did not go well customers would leave and they don't always tell you that's why they're not leaving or that's why they're not referring this, is this making sense to you all so I want you to understand that your customer service is a part of your brand let's think of Chick-fil-a um, when we think of Chick-fil-A, we I don't care what city I've been in, <laughs> it has pretty much been the same and different people actually own the different franchises. So it's not like the person in Atlanta's Chick-fil-A um, owns the one in all of the ones in North Carolina and so they carry that same energy. No, it's systems. Another space of customer service is the time that you're taking to train the people that work in your business. As the owner, you have to slow down long enough to get those foundational things in place, to get your systems in place so that number one, you're always marketing your business so that you have an influx of new clients and customers. And when you get those foundational things right, and this is why I talk about the different stages of growth. And many people say, well, I've been in business five, 10, 15, 20 years. And in their mind that equates to them being a great business. And I'm not saying that they aren't doing a good skill set. But when you're still in the C stage and you attempt to skip steps to go to that growth stage or that stage of expansion, it, it actually backfires on you and who you are as a brand. So while you're doing well, but you don't have global um, profile or global exposure, take the time 
to get the systems that you need in your business. So as you are getting a new influx of clients and customers and new people experiencing your business, you have consistency and congruency in the customer service experience that the clients are having. You won't have to keep feeling like you need to slash your prices because you constantly are forgetting things or dropping the ball, all of those things. Now, if this is you, if this is hitting home for you, as it should, message me. Uh, my VIP days are absolutely awesome for this very thing that I'm naming. We go over six focus areas of your business. We look at the inside out of your business and then we pick a particular strategy to work on so that we can get foundational strength in that area. When I see people consistently adding new things to their business and their systems aren't in order, I can almost predict what is going to happen long term. It may be loss of clients that you did not notice um, was happening. You noticed it in the pocket. <laughs> but you didn't notice like why it was happening oftentimes guys it is in your system system save yourself um, time energy and money see many people are putting out fires in their in their business they're overworked as the owner and the operator they're not taking the time to formally train people for the business to run as a brand so that people are getting somewhat of the same experience irregardless of who they are speaking to or talking to. Guys, even my customer care coordinators who were in charge of um, scheduling appointments, my newsletters, you know, much of the administrative things, they were the first point of contact other than website and things of that nature that the clients would meet. They went through a training program. They went through a training program. So maybe you don't have time to train your staff. You can hire me to come in and train your staff or to virtually train your staff, depending on which system we are implementing in your business. And I know it, it may not seem important, but it's huge. It is a part of your brand, not your website, not your logos, not your pretty pictures, because all of those things can be pristine, they can be in place and in order, but when people experience your business, they are experiencing your brand. So they may get a great first impression and you may bring the people in, but if they are not staying, there's something off. I was on the phone with a client earlier um, who signed up for a, a private coaching with me and she was replaying something I shared in a, the video that I did on yesterday where I talked about how I had lost 90% of my customers and I didn't notice it I didn't notice it in my pockets or anything because I had systems in place where new people were coming in and the reasons that I lost those 90% of the clients that I previously had is because number one, I was on the west side <laughs> before I opened my brick and mortar service based business and so much of my business had expanded and evolved and it was no longer in alignment with those clients. So they initially came, but I had systems, there was a flow to the business. I was designing my brick and mortar business for my perfect people. I had somewhat outgrown many of the people that I was servicing before. Now some of them stayed because they were ready for that new experience. They were ready for that growth as well. But I did not feel it in my pocket because the systems I had in place for bringing in new people into the business. We had, um, we had a flow for everything, for sign-in, consultations, there was a system. And I remember asking myself, so I, I owned a brick and mortar service based business for a decade prior to coaching and consulting full time, which is what I get to do from the comfort of my home. And I'm so grateful. I will always say that it has changed my life significantly. And freedom is one of my top five values. It was my value when I owned a brick and mortar service based business as well, which was the reason that I hired, which was the reason that I had systems in place to alleviate me having to do everything. When I actually opened my brick and mortar business, so 
I opened my brick and mortar business. I got married. Then I had my daughter two years after and my daughter went to daycare and ended up getting a respiratory infection. And for about a year, eight months, a year, I don't remember the numbers exactly, but I did not work full time. I worked maybe, I think I worked two days for about four hours. There's no way I could have continued a fairly new business. It was a couple years old and it still continued to run if I didn't already have systems in place, if I hadn't trained staff. I, I mean, I remember things like I, I had a system even for how deposits were made and it was a, a systems. That's really what it was. And I get it. Most of the time you open your business from a creative skill set that you have or some type of intellectual property and some of the business aspects like marketing and customer service and you know how smooth things go they're not really things that artsy people or people who are really just wanting to work in their craft are thinking about and I think it's important that you get your business to a space where that is all that you have to do is that thing that you love to do the most in your business whether you're the visionary and now you've turned into a coach and you're coaching your staff so your main um, role is to coach your staff through the systems. I think it's important if that is the space that you're evolving into or if your work is to coach and consult and you just really want to do that. You don't want to be bothered with all of the other stuff. You still need the other stuff. You still need those systems in place. And so if I'm speaking your language, if, if I'm impacting you from a soul, soul level, and you know, like, yes, I'm growing. Yes, I've been making good money, but I'm dropping the ball in some areas. I am actually spending more than I should be to cover up for some of the errors that I'm making because I don't have the appropriate systems or because I haven't taken the time to learn those systems and put them in place so that my business can work for me instead of me always putting out fires and feeling like, you know, if I'm not around, it's not going down, right? So you build your business to work for you. And my job is to support you in creating a business that funds your lifestyle, not run your lifestyle. That's my take on today. Um, for those of you who are interested in a VIP day with me, I absolutely positively love the in-person VIP days. Depending on where you are, you can fly in. Um, for the VIP day, it may be, um, depending on your distance, it may be somewhere that you can drive to, or you can also do the virtual option. But I love the in-person VIP days because we also get to sit and break bread together and really form um, a, another level of connectivity. Um, we also get that through virtual, but you guys know energy is transferred and it definitely transfers at a greater rate whether it's transferring my belief or um, a, a mindset shift uh, that is needed. I absolutely love the in-person, but um, they, they are also offered virtually online as well. I will put that in the comments. Let me know. Listen, you know, we're, if we're going big, we're going big. If we're going big, we're going big. And big doesn't mean busy. Big doesn't mean a whole lot of stuff. Big doesn't mean I have this service menu with 50,000 services because I'm operating from a scarcity mindset thinking that if I simplify my business, I'm going to leave money on the table when I'm actually losing money, right? Because my hands are in too many pots. That's my take. I would love to support you. I'm Tanya Wilson, Master Life and Business Coach. I help women just like you step into your personal power, scale your businesses to six and multiple six figures, and create a lifestyle that you love. We build businesses from the inside out. Your systems are the internal things so that the external things that you do so that your brand, which is what the marketplace sees, you know, that's what they experience so that it is the soundboard for growth, for your big goals, your big dreams, and your big vision. That's my take. Peace and abundance.